featuring gin. So stick around, pull up a chair at the bar, and we'll be right back with Backyard Bartender. Welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell, and our special guest today, Leslie Ann Corrigan. And uh, she is uh, a rather interesting person because, uh, well, in that you have uh, had your own radio program. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've worked as a bartender. I have. And uh, you do something really interesting, which I think a lot of people would find fascinating. You forage for uh, different botanicals and that to use in drinks. I have done, we'll say. I'm not really a forager so much, but I have gone. But I think all of us are sort of foragers that we don't really think that we are. Berry picking is foraging. True, yeah. If you go and you know gather a few mussels, if you happen to find them on the rocks, that is foraging. And of course, if you're a hunter, like so many people in Newfoundland and Labrador are, that is foraging and hunting and gathering is a big part of our, our whole culture here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So that was my next question. Newfoundland and Labrador is a great place for that, right? Definitely. It is the, you know, one of the best places in the world. And I think like a lot of times with Newfoundland, we often look at other places in the world and think that they do things better than we do. We have a bit of an inferiority complex, but I'm really happy to see that we've kind of taken center stage with this live off the land movement that's happening around the world and we've stepped up and become you know worthy of the things that are around us that we can use in our food and drink and sharing that with the world so can you go out and live off the land i think i could if i had the right people i'm not going to ask me. you to do that in the show <laughs> if i had some the right company and okay. the right tools yes right. So how could. many years were you attending bar i well i worked all over downtown and i worked as a bartender and a server and i worked as you know, in the pit, as they say. So yeah. I've, I've I went through that university while I was going through university yeah. myself. So I worked downtown for the better part of a decade, we'll say. But most of my experience was not cocktail based. I can pull a pint. When you do, when you install <laughs> some taps, I'm going to do I, a black and tan. I actually do have a, 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 a tap. But, uh. Call me back. <laughs> okay. I'll do a black and tan for you like you've never seen. But no, I since then, and of course, working in the outdoor industry, like you said, with the radio show and things like that, I really got to see what was happening with cocktails and food and drinks and whatnot. So I've gotten a, just an interest in it. All right, well, let's get started. What are we making today? So when you said you wanted to work with gin because it's your favorite, I was delighted. <laughs> <Me> <laughs> because <too. laughs> gin is, is one of those spirits that really takes on, and of course it's blended with botanicals and all of the best gins around the world are made using the things that these companies and, and stills have around them. So mm -hmm. Newfoundland has a, a few great distilleries. There's other ones across Atlantic Canada and over in Scotland, things like that that we're gonna use today. So we're gonna start with the Gimlet. Okay, so we're going to use a, a gin from Nova Scotia here. For this one, okay. exactly. And so what I've done is, like you mentioned, we're going to do with a simple syrup. So um, typically if you're making, you know, when I worked downtown, it was all grenadine and things like yeah, that, yeah. you know, prefabricated syrup. But you made syrup. this yourself. I did. So all it is is one part sugar, one part water, and you boil it. That's your simple syrup. What I did was I threw a few partridge berries, literally a handful. Ones that you picked yourself. Yes, of, of course. course. <laughs> and if they're in the freezer or if they've been overwintered, they're the best. Okay. So never use your partridge berries the first year. Freeze uh -oh. them, Good use them know. next year. Good yeah. And then, oh, sorry, okay. we're throwing things <laughs> in the bar already. I love it. So um, yeah, so we just, some spruce and just put it in there, much okay. like you use rosemary. All right, well, so I'll we let boil you get that and let it thicken up. So okay. yeah, I mean, all we do for this is I always like to chill the glass a little first. Yeah. They even have their own glassware. Yes, they do. Yeah. It's awesome. And there's some, you know, businesses in Newfoundland, like the Newfoundland Distillery, there's a new one coming now, Wooden Walls Distillery yes, coming yeah, yeah, yeah. downtown St. John. So there's companies that are doing exactly what, you know, has been happening all over the world. They're doing it right here, right now, and using these things that are around them, which is great to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to take half an ounce of the uh, simple syrup. Put that oh, in there. Thick. Yeah, okay. It is thick, so you want to reduce it down. It takes yeah. about 10 minutes, okay. you know? Uh, and then we're going to do two ounces of this. This is a blueberry gin from Which Stein, is gonna, Steinhardt. Yeah, so it's going to work really well with the partridge okay. berries, I think. We've got like a, a berry. So the two ounces of this. All right. Wow. Okay. Are you ready for this? I am, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ready for this? And then we need the juice of a whole lime. So typically you'd say, you know, an ounce of, uh, of lime juice, but in Newfoundland with our skimpy limes and what we're left with by the time they get here, we're definitely going to need the full, you've got all the tools, Brian. I'm used to using well, just my hands. If that, well, I figure if I was going to have bartenders around, real professional bartenders, I, I better have something for them to work with. Well, so. you know what? You're, it's very, very much more fancy than I'd get if I was off, living off the land. <laughs> I wouldn't make many gimlets in yeah. uh, the woods, though, I don't think. All right. So get the full 
lime juice there. Okay. And so we just add a bit of ice in here. And a little shake. We discard our ice back there. We don't want the ice. We just want the, the chilled glass. cold okay. glass, right? And then here we go. Oops, making a mess. It's a very large glass for a very concentrated drink. Well, that's fine, though, because I think, you know, we were talking about this in earlier shows. Uh, you begin having the drink. Uh, you smell with, with it first. You smell it, and then you... And then you taste it. It's right? the you full know. experience, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I hope that in this, then, that you'll get um, the the taste, the smell, rather, of the spruce, of course, first, and uh, then the taste of the partridge berry. I love partridge berry; it's probably one of my favorite flavors. And what are we putting um, in here? So now? just a bit of lime, and normally I would kind of put the spruce hanging over the glass. Oh, yeah, nice we'll have to do that with such a big glass because sure, okay. I don't want it swimming around in there. But yeah, so there is a gimlet using the Steinhardt gin from Nova Scotia and the Partridge Berry and Spruce Syrup. I don't know if I can recall if I've ever had a gimlet or the last time I, I did have a gimlet. So It's uh, a nice refreshing summer drink. Well, um, it is. It is a, a, has a lovely fragrance to it. Yeah. And uh, believe it or not, you can smell uh, a little bit of the... Uh, what is this here? This is so this is spruce. Spruce, okay. Oh, yeah. Brian, before we go on, oh, I'm oh. sorry. I'm trying to make this into a, uh, a three-ring circus <laughs> event here today. We forgot to add the soda. So you just want to top it off with a little soda. Just a little soda, okay. Just a little for the okay. bubble and just to thin it out a little right. bit. Well, so. here we go. Let's try this. <laughs> this is a gimlet made by Leslie Ann. Da, 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 da. It's such a large glass. You've got to wait for it. But you. you know what? That's so refreshing. It is. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're, you're not tasting gin. No, you're going to taste the syrup because yeah, it is you, so you, sweet. You taste the syrup and you taste uh, um, some of the other... Um, I, I don't know what else was in the syrup. There's this partridge berry and spruce. So did spruce. you get the partridge yeah, berry? I'm getting a little bit of spruce. Nice. I thought the spruce was coming from the side, but it's not. It's a... It's all your senses working together. So, mm. uh, and like you say, I mean, I've seen so many people do such wonderful things. Well, that now. is just delightful. Excellent. Yeah, Congrats. it really is. All right, so uh, uh, Steinhardt Gin from Nova Scotia and uh, locally foraged, what we call these? Uh, uh, ingredients. Ingredients. We'll say, yes, yeah. And of course, make your own simple <laughs> syrup and uh, you get yourself a, a beautiful gimlet. And uh, if you uh, want that recipe, uh, keep watching and we'll tell you how you can get all of these recipes. Leslie Ann Corrigan joining us today on Backyard Bartender. What are we going to do next? Well, next uh, we're going to make a martini. I believe uh, those are your favorites. That's one of my favorites. So yes. no pressure. All right. If you're a martini <laughs> fan, stick around. We'll have some fun with that when we come back here on Backyard Bartender. Welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell. Leslie Ann Corrigan from The Outdoor Show is joining us today. And uh, she's a forager from way back. We've been talking about foraging uh, for uh, all the things you need to uh, have in your own bar at home. And you've given us a couple of great tips today. But now we're going to move along to something that I really like. It's a martini. You do. You told do. me that. I do. And, uh, you know, I've had good martinis and I've had martinis that are not so good. But... Uh, what makes a good martini? I don't know. You tell me since you love them so much. So this is the <laughs> thing. Like I'm a, I am I pull pints. So when you told me you want, I can easily make you a martini. All I've right. made many, but I'm I'm not a martini lover. So what do you love about a martini? Well, I like it to be cold, okay. you know, uh, it, it, somewhat refreshing. And you don't, you don't want a lot of them. You know, the old saying, one martini, two at the most. And even that would be too many. Uh, but uh, I like a good gin with the martini. Okay. Right? And I never quite know, you know, when you're mixing the vermouth, because some people like a lot of vermouth in, in a glass, uh, in a martini, and some like a little sprinkle, but I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, you know, I think the cold glass is what makes it for me. Mm -hmm. so. And what about your garnish? I know that's very oh, important. Olives. Olives? And I found these all olives that are stuffed with almonds, and I know some of you purists are going, no, 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 but they're really good. <laughs> and it's kind of like a little meal before and or after you're having your martini. So you want several olives, that's the thing. <laughs> but, but some people do like that. I mean, sometimes you see them with the, the string yes, of olives, yeah. so that's your thing. They go yeah. on forever. It which, looks which, nice, it, though. It does, Looks yeah. classy. And there's something about a, a martini 
uh, when you sit down to have a nice meal, you sit down and have a martini, there's something grand about it. You know? Oh, you know, I'm a huge classic movie fan, and martinis for me are just that. They are that, you know, extra say special Go on, story. Say it. The movie is. <laughs> oh, I was a huge, I'm a huge Thin Man um, fan, okay, so I so love. Everything goes back to radio. <laughs> that was a uh, 1940, from, from 1941 to 1950, I think. It was a radio play. Okay. Um, ah, what was the guy's name? Damon. So in the movie, it was it was William Powell and Myrna Loy. So okay. they were the married couple who were solving movies, but mostly they just drank martinis. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I'm, well, let's not break with tradition. Right, let's so, get right to it. So, but I don't remember the the radio show. Was that on? It was when an you actual were, radio. Okay. Not, well, <laughs> I'm not that old, but it was a radio show. Thank okay, you Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome <laughs> okay, so according to the recipe that I was provided for this... Oh, so you, <laughs> someone gave you a recipe? It had to. All right, okay. It's not very hard. All right. it's, uh, it's just, you know, two versus one. So now, Are you going to chill the glass as well? I am going to chill the glass because you really want a cold glass. So we've heard that. Okay. So I'm even chilling the metal first okay. because it's a nice hot day here. Yeah, so good. did you yeah. order this up for us? I did, today? yeah. Every, uh, every time we shoot uh, Backyard Bartender, I... Uh, call Environment Canada and tell them I need a nice warm day. So here we are. You know, you've got a direct line. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. So what gin are we using? With so these? we're going to use Hendrix gin. So Hendrix gin is fairly well known. It's uh, from the Grant family, the Scottish family. They mm -hmm. do the scotch that everybody knows and loves. Um, but this is their gin. And so much like what we were talking about earlier with the foraging, um, they use botanicals that they find around them in Scotland. So as you can imagine, it's similar to what we're going to find here. So the tastes will be familiar to you, okay. um, but should be refreshing like okay. you said with your cold glass and <laughs> how much gin are we going to use so uh we typically use like a two to one quarter okay. kind of ratio okay. so uh two ounces of gin to a half an ounce or two to a half so you okay. do the half ounce of vermouth but again you mentioned earlier that that's a preference so how would you normally you just kind of want to go by the recipe i'll go with whatever you go name. let's go with the yeah, recipe sure. <laughs> then if we need to adjust later right. so this is the gin that people might remember it now because they have a, a big TV campaign oddly infused with rose and cucumber yes. you may have seen so I um, actually have one of those yes so this is the Hendrix gin that they're that they're talking about so we're going to see if we can pick up the notes the rose okay. and right. the cucumber I'm going to help you and I'm going to put one right there by your nose so the okay. same thing with the last one <laughs> we're going to smell it then taste it all right so we've got the the gin in there then we'll do the vermouth so okay. we typically like to use an extra dry vermouth yeah, and I was uh, difficult to source an extra dry vermouth uh, so I had to go uh, with what was available to me. Yes. So, well, I mean, again, I don't know if there's a huge market for martini drinkers. I don't know if there's many classic movie fans out there <laughs> who like to pretend oh, they're Myrna Loy. There are. I bet, I, well, there will be after we're done here. Uh, there definitely will. Uh, yeah. People uh, are going to take us off, as my mother would say. So before we go any further, the question remains. The question of the hour when you're making a martini. Shaken or stirred? Shaken. Lick it. So you're not afraid to bruise the gin, as no, they say? No, no, I'm not. No, no I will no. going to use that you've given me the perfect segue because actually one of my favorite uh, quotes from the Thin Man is that he says, you know, that the, the drinks have to be shaken to a rhythm. So one of the rhythms for the uh, martini is to the waltz. So we're going to shake this to the waltz. <laughs> you don't want to shake it too much. Oh, so I, we'll did not, yeah. I did not realize that. Yeah, that's apparently. We, we had a number of bartenders here, and they all have a certain technique for Some really yeah, like to yeah. shake it. With so a cocktail, like a, drink, a fruity cocktail, okay. you probably want to shake it. But I'm just following William Powell now. So he said to the wall. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then we're just going to pour it in here, and we'll add your olives. So what about the olive juice? Do you bother with no, the dirty no, martini? I, no, I don't, uh, don't enjoy that at all. No. So yeah. far, so good. So looks, far, so it good. It looks very it looks familiar. very refreshing. So we're going to add this garnish, like I said, and it will kind of heighten your senses mm -hmm. um, before we go in. And we've got a toothpick to gather your olives. And we're going to do a couple. And as I said, I, I use these uh, uh, all, olives that are stuffed with almonds, which I particularly enjoy. They so, do look lovely. They do. So there you go. There's your classic martini. It's a classic martini. With uh, Hendrix gin. Hendrix gin. And this is, uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take that from you and uh, give this a give this a go uh, and nice garnish by the way thank you hopefully it helps <laughs> i think that's important for people to kind of consider when they're thinking about the garnish too is that it adds to the flavor it certainly does and uh, i think also when you make a martini yourself at home it's not quite the same 
when somebody makes a martini for you. How does it stack up? It stacks up really good. You've done a very good job on this. Phew. You know, you can <laughs> probably leave the pulling pints behind you and get into the uh, the martini. I tray. might not have as much business as I would have <laughs> around here pulling pints. No, this is really, really good. <laughs> a, a cold glass. The olives are great. Uh, the garnish is wonderful. The gin and the vermouth both complement each other. Probably the vermouth could be a little drier, but as I say, it's difficult to source that here. But if you're going away and you're coming back home, you can probably do that. So uh, if you'd like to try the uh, classic martini in your backyard bar, uh, this is one of those that you can try. And if you like uh, olives that are stuffed with almonds, try those too because they're quite delicious. I know some of the uh, purists would say, no, 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 no. It's got to be just your, your, your regular olive, but uh, that is quite good. Leslie Ann Corrigan, so uh, that's two down. We've got mm -hmm. uh, the gimlet done. We've made the martini. What is coming up next? Next is one of my favorite drinks, a classic gin and tonic. But of course, I'm going to add a little few little schnazzy things okay. to that, too. Well, and why is that your favorite drink? I just find it very refreshing. It's very light. It's never, you know, if you're out with friends and it's not complicated, yeah. everyone knows how to make a gin and tonic. It's not as complicated to make, even though a martini has, you know, less sort of complicating steps. Yeah. It's that balance between the, the ingredients. But a gin and tonic, g and giver. I think, yeah, a lot of people uh, enjoy it. Uh, g &T, yeah. especially on a summer so we had a fall day a warm fall day so uh we'll be back uh with uh, a gin and tonic next on backyard bartender hey i'm brian o'connell with uh, leslie ann corrigan and we're back on backyard bartender so we've made a martini we've had a gimlet and we're going to move along to uh something else what are we making this a time? gin and tonic gin and tonic now a g and t I don't think there's anything quite as nice as a GNT. You're, I think you're right. Yeah? yeah. I think you're right. And I don't like to mess with this too much because yeah. it is so classic. Yeah. But again, um, we're going to pull on some of these local ingredients. Okay. And like I mentioned before, early on in the first segment of the show, there are companies who are, it's not just people like me or going yeah. out in their yards and, and picking spruce. So, no, I, I <laughs> want to uh, just correct something. We, we talked about foraging. You forage for yourself. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. There is a whole industry yeah. of people who yeah. forage. But you're not, a, for you're a not part of that industry. No. Oh. But I have been very lucky to profile people who are a part of that industry. And, and there are people who have written books in Newfoundland and Labrador about foraging. That's right, Sean Dawson, and he wrote Forager's Dinner, and yes. you can find him at the Farmer's Market every week, and he was actually a guest on the Outdoor Hour twice. Okay. So one time we went foraging in Trapassi during a hurricane, literally during okay. a tropical storm. <laughs> it's a great time to be in Trapassi, I will say, <laughs> on the beach. Lots just of to protection, wave. yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, because it was a tropical storm, it was quite warm. We just had, I was there with the folks from Legendary Coasts, uh -huh. and we were doing a show. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't TV then, it was radio. So we didn't get the full effect of that tropical storm, but I think you heard it. Um, but we had these yellow, just uh, disposable raincoats. That's all we had. <laughs> and what were you looking for? So we looked for, it was amazing, Brian. And that's the thing, like people, like Sean and uh, and Cod Sounds and, and these folks from the Third Place Cocktail Company, um, they are out in in everywhere looking for things and finding things and it's traditional knowledge that has been passed down and it's First Nations knowledge that we're starting to uncover again and it's the tastes and flavors that are around us everywhere. So we were on the beach this particular time in Trapassi and we found things that you literally walk over every day when yep. you go to the beach what? and we they were delicious. I don't know the names of them. You got to buy the book. <laughs> okay. But if I was there, I could see them and I could eat them. We made a salad and it was a great big huge salad out of things that we literally just picked up off the beach. Fantastic. Yeah, it was great. All right, so this is a gin and tonic, a classic gin and tonic. Where, where's this gin from? So this is actually from the Isle of Islay. Okay. Um, it's the remote island off of Scotland. Yeah, and I must say, this is a gift to me from a friend of mine, Pete Larden. So thank you, Pete, for that. Uh, Pete's in New Guinea right now, and he told me to put that on the bar for uh, the next time I'm making a nice uh, gin drink. So here we are. Here we are. All right, so thank you. what goes in a G and T? So G and T, it's pretty basic, but the thing is we typically kind of reach for that tonic water, the Canada Dry or the Schweppes, yeah. which is fine. We're not yeah. gonna, but there are many other options and okay. it's nice to kind of expand your palate a little bit and try some new things, especially when these new things are made by great local companies. Sure. Um, so we're gonna use the botanist gin. We wanna put some ice in our glass first. I okay. like a nice heavy glass for mm -hmm. our uh, gin and tonic. Okay. Um, um, 
And so, when's the best time to enjoy a gin and tonic? Any time is a great time for a gin and tonic. I'd like to avoid <laughs> breakfast. Okay. And, but Probably fair a good game idea. after right, that. Okay. I mean, you've got this beautiful place. I mean. So if you're home in the afternoon and it comes around to a cocktail hour before dinner, a uh, nice gin and tonic at the end of the day. I feel like Rachel and Mac Corey, Ben, when that <laughs> happens, you know? Mix me and gin and tonic. And they remember they used to go over to the thing on the, and they, everybody had the cocktail decanter. Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. We did, these bottles are almost as lovely as yeah. these decanters. So we're just gonna do the uh, two ounces. Two ounces, okay. Yeah, always do two. Always two, okay, okay. I'll remember that. Yeah. All right. So, um, two ounces of the Botanist gin. Over ice. Over ice. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no shaking or anything that's going to happen I with this? Don't, no, no. I, I don't like to kind of, no, this okay. I'm going to be worried about bruising the gin, but I don't want like to make it any more complicated. Yeah. They mix well together. The soda water that we're going to put in on, those bubbles will kind of mix things okay. through. So it, it's nice to kind of get the taste yeah. of, of the, okay. the ingredients. So now we're going to use the third place tonic. So we want to do a full ounce of this. So this isn't your, like your typical tonic water. This is just the tonic essence. So mm -hmm. this has essence and the ingredient, the labels on these are beautiful. They've researched their ingredients really well, and they've presented it beautifully. Um, so you just kind of get to take an ounce of this. That's all you need is an ounce. This is just the essence. And then the soda will be the water then with that. So it's as you can see, it's, it's got a bit of color to yeah, it. Sure, yeah. Not probably what you're used to with the gin and tonic. No, normally tonic is a clear. It, it, yeah, it can be, absolutely. It depends okay. on the distilling process, I guess, of this, you know, um, of the essences of that and the ingredients that they use to put into it. So then we just top this off with some soda. You don't want to drown it. Yeah. Um, again, you can't take it out once it's in there, but you can always add more to it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to garnish this. Typically, you would just use a lime. Um, I always like to kind of obviously cut the ends off your lime. Um, give yourself a, a nice cut for the glass. A nice thick lime in case you do want to use it to okay. add to the drink. Okay. And I, then you can squeeze that in. If you you can okay. if you want. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's no citrus in there right now. Lots of people do kind of associate um, the gin and tonic with a nice squeeze of citrus, okay. but that's to your taste. It, I, I hate to squeeze, you know, lime in a recipe that doesn't kind of call for it sure. in case that person is really a purist, like you've said. <laughs> I'm also going to add some of the spruce to this because it's going to pick up some of the elements that are in both of these okay. that kind of complement each other. It's really neat to see companies Companies kind of working together. I know that it happens a lot locally, but it's happening in the in the spirits industry all over. Um, so you get spirits kind of, you know, recommending the ingredients sure, to use and that sure. sort of thing. So we're going to add the spruce there to that. Use it as a little almost like a stick. swizzle stick. It's yeah, okay. beautiful. All right. And there you go. So this is the uh, gin and tonic with uh, locally sourced and um, some great gin from the Isle of Islay and. Uh, Oh, I like that. Yeah, different taste. It is, yeah. And and you, you do get that uh, little essence of lime there. You do get uh, the spruce. You, you certainly get uh, the, the, the tonic, and the soda is a, a, a beautiful addition to it. And it's uh, really clean on the palate, really nice. clean on the palate. So that's your classic gin and tonic. If you would like to have a, a gin and tonic in the afternoon, uh, maybe on a, a warm fall afternoon, you'd like to sit outside and enjoy that while you're reading a book. That's certainly a, a drink to enjoy. One more question before mm -hmm. we wrap up. Where do you go foraging? Well, I you can actually go in your backyard. I'm fortunate to live in um, you know a bit more of a rural place. I mm -hmm. live in Whitless Bay, and I, I live right on the water, so I'm very lucky that way. Um, but you also, in this beautiful setting here, you can find things in your own yard. I mean, mm -hmm. the best and most common example of foraging, and this is something that people have done for generations here, and they didn't put a label on it. They were just calling it living. <laughs> but, <laughs> but dandelion. Oh, that. Yeah, exactly. Dandelion. When those first dandelion uh, leaves come out on the ground and you're cursing them pick them eat them they're delicious and then of course as the dandelion goes through its own life cycle every part of the dandelion is edible and we don't even use it as you know we should I've had that conversation with several people this spring and we were talking about uh, Newfoundlanders and dandelions and uh, they talked about how wonderful it was with Sunday dinner and ah. people would always wait for springtime and I'm old enough to remember people uh, going around fields and, and foraging for, for dandelions. So really foraging uh, 
comes naturally to us, you know. It's it's one of those things that we've done here in Newfoundland and Labrador. It probably fell out of favor, and now all of a sudden, this is coming back into favor. Now, the outdoor show is heard when and where? So it's the outdoor hour on VOCM, and we're on Sunday evenings at 7 and Wednesday evenings at 5. And I just basically talk to people who work and make their living in the outdoors and do great things with what we've been given here. All right. Well, thank you, Leslie Ann Corrigan, for joining us today on Backyard Bartender. The uh, Gimlet, the Martini, and the Gin and Tonic, some great drinks. We hope you'll try them and uh, enjoy them. Uh, we'll be back to talk a little bit more about what's coming up next on Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell. Drink responsibly, and we'll talk to you in just a moment. But not to belabor the point, but that is really one of the nicest drinks that I've had. I in, like that one, I think, too. And that's Leslie Ann Corrigan uh, joining us today on uh, Backyard Bartender. So uh, we've done gimlets, we've done martinis. Oh, my goodness, we had uh, some uh, fabulous drinks in previous shows. We talked about uh, beers from Newfoundland and Labrador, the craft beer industry, how that is after taking off in Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, we also have uh, coming up some... Uh, truly amateur mixologists and uh, these are people who are uh, have no professional affiliation or have never worked behind an actual working bar mm. but uh, they're going to join us in a, a couple of episodes and uh, make some of their favorite drinks drinks that uh, as uh, Ricky one of our guests uh, Ricky Lopez said uh, a lot of these cocktails that he was making were drinks that were uh, concocted by uh, customers in bars. They said, this is the drink I like. I tried it at home. Can you make it for me? And next thing you know, you have a drink named after you. So uh, that's coming up on a future episode of uh, Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with another episode real soon. Stay safe, everybody. Be well, be kind, and uh, drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time here on Backyard Bartender. Cheers. Cheers.